Welcome friends to another episode of IGN Unfiltered, my monthly interview series where I get to sit down with the best, brightest, most interesting minds in the games industry. Uh, today I'm joined by none other than Sam Lake from Remedy Entertainment. Sam, I've been chasing you for years. It's been years. At this yes. point, uh, you have such a fascinating career, I'm so eager to speak with you. In fact, because you're never in San Francisco and I'm never in Finland, so we had to convene here in Los <laughs> Angeles during E3. Uh, but I, it's a miracle you're here at all because I'm told that you're currently cursed. What has been well, going on yeah, with you? Yeah. <laughs> I like like it, it it feels appropriate with control being all about these weird things happening <laughs> altered world events yeah. you can hear hear it in my voice <clears throat> so so I lost my voice a couple of days ago oh. I had a cold and had to be speaking a lot at work doing yeah. presentations and it was just completely gone I it never has happened to me before and and then my phone broke one day before the trip. <laughs> Had to scramble to get a new phone. Did uh, something happened with your car, I heard too. Yeah, yeah. Let's not, <laughs> let's not even go to that. And, oh, and yeah, it didn't stop there, but it's been ongoing. So looking forward to the next thing to happen. Like, like. <laughs> well, it's all it's all up from here, right? It's uh, you got it all out of the way yeah, at I, once. I, I already said that a couple of times, oh, and then no. something more happened. So yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, Happy to be here. Thank you for being here, because uh, again, your career, I, I've, I've genuinely been a fan of your work for and the team's work since, since Max Payne. I mean, it's that game, uh, which, is, which is near the beginning, not quite the beginning. We'll talk about the beginning. Sure, yeah. But uh, it's just, I, I don't think you guys have ever made anything less than an excellent game. Not, it's not that you haven't even made a bad game. It's, I think they've all been varying degrees of excellent, and you just... Your team has a, a special something that I want to try and get at a little bit here. And, and I always like to start with, with my guests at the beginning. So I'm, I'm always curious, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a kid? As a kid? Uh, <clears throat> like, depends on how far back you go. <laughs> like, like, uh, but did you, I mean, did you want to be a writer yes, early on? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I liked making up stories. I, I liked pretend like well yeah. all kids do but but maybe maybe more and <clears throat> maybe maybe a bit more purposefully putting an effort to it like uh, we with the games that we were playing uh, there was a time I would say around 12 after I found Lord of the Rings and and fell in love with that and and went on to chase like reading the <clears throat> nudic like like edda poems like that were part of the source for Tolkien. cool and and i i, I definitely wanted to be a, a professor of mythology that was my life that's what that's i'm gonna cool. be <laughs> that didn't last that long but but yeah well, you're the professor of a certain mythology now in, in, sure. in the gaming yeah. universe yeah. so it kind of came true eventually um, so did you, did you play video games as a kid? Well, computer games, I guess. Right. Like, like uh, Commodore 64 was my first gaming platform yeah. that I had. And yeah, I played a lot, uh, <clears throat> all kinds of games really, like as you, as you did, but, but really fell in love with role playing games and, and, and Ultima series in particular. You know, like, I think I feel like Ultima. I I think this is the forty fourth episode of this forty fourth time I, Ultima comes out. But I yeah, I think you're not far off. It's it's Ultima and role playing games seem to be a, a quite the common denominator with with game designers and and game creatives. And so what what you just I, I take it the was it just the worlds you you were just immersed yeah. in, in like, the world? Like it it just felt incredible that that. There can be worlds like that as, as uh, in, inside a game yeah. and you would just dive in and immerse yourself. I mean, in some ways, I, I, I kind of feel that the graphics being so simple that that just stimulated your imagination. Yeah. And you were making things up on your own at the same time. Right, filling in the gaps in your yeah, mind. Right. right. And, and, and putting an effort to it as well. Like, you know, you had to have a notebook and you were drawing maps and... Yeah. and you were kind of engaged in a in a very real manner, and and 
also there, if you look, I, I started with Ultima 2. Okay. That was my first. But already the leap to 3, how much more content and how much deeper the world felt and more real. Like it was a huge leap then. And then going on to like 4 and 5 and 6. And yeah. So, so that was a big deal. Uh, yeah, I played a lot. And, and uh, you know, text based adventure games and, 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 and all of that. That was like in Finland, you know, as a kid growing up, obviously English is not my native language. And, and, but you started learning a lot because there was also a really strong motivation to learn. Sure. All of this content, this wonderful content is in English. So, so you are learning and, 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 you know, somewhere in, before high school, I just like stumbled in a bookstore in Helsinki into the section of, uh, of English paperbacks, fantasy books. And that was like, you know, I remember that there, there, there is this moment of almost like this angel choir like <laughs> sound coming and, you know, having been in library and finding Lord of the Rings, they were definitely, the classics were translated into Finnish. Like, like, you know, uh, uh, Earthsea books and things like that. Tarzan, obviously, yeah. uh, John Carter of Mars, these books. Uh, but then suddenly there were kind of rows and rows of paperbacks with, with interesting fantasy covers. And I just picked a thick one and, and started going through that w with a dictionary. Wow, that's, like, a, like, that's awesome. And, and 20 pages in, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm never going to get to the end. So I put the dictionary away. I'll just fill the gaps with my imagination. If I don't understand a word, yeah. I'll just figure out like... And, and what what still, a clever way to go about it, actually. I, I think that if I would ever go back to those books, I would now discover that this is not the story. <laughs> <I read. laughs> like, but but maybe that's know, not the point in a but, sense though right you, you yeah but <laughs> you know english language and especially us but but uk culture also in a very strong way like true television in finland we don't dub the shows there are okay. subtitles so yeah. you are learning through that uh they have a very limited section of say comic books like like marvel superhero comic books translated but then discovering that you can actually already back then you could order them straight from the stage and, and suddenly the selection just widened yes. into a huge thing and reading those and learning the language through that. That's awesome. So have you, uh, this is another question I've asked a lot of guests, going back to Ultima for a second. Have you had a chance now in your long career to meet Richard Garriott? I have met him a couple of times, not really like short conversation, you know, I, I think that the last time was a couple of years ago in Barcelona at Game Lab. Yeah. I mean, we were both there and, well, said hi. And sure. Me, but yeah. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's, sure, uh, he's yeah. got some stories, too, if you sit him down. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's been to space. He, he has, <laughs> yes, yeah. But, like, incredible games, like, back then. And I actually, for me, the order was maybe slightly different. I only found tabletop role-playing games slightly after, a few mm -hmm. years after being introduced to D&D and, and fell in love with that and was playing for years and years and being a game master for our group and, and inventing more stories yeah. and writing a lot. And, and that's actually what ultimately led me to Remedy. And, right, and yeah, you, uh, uh, video do I, is the story, do I have the story correct where a, a friend of yours uh, enlisted your help to write on Death Rally? Yeah, uh, and Remedy's a, first a, game. a childhood friend, Petri Arvileto, who was part of our role-playing, tabletop role okay. game group. And, and, and he was also into the demo scene, which was really active and big in Finland. Like he was doing graphics and stuff like that cool. on, on Amiga yeah. uh, back then. And, and he was one of the founding members of Remedy uh, with a few other guys. Basically everybody coming from the demo scene. Mm -hmm. Just like doing the demos and then deciding, hey, we could do games. Yeah. And, and they were already quite far into creating Death Rally, the, the first Remedy game. And, and Petri obviously knew of my writing. At the, and, and in all likelihood, 
in his circle of friends, I was pretty much the only one kind of <laughs> very seriously pushing it forward and trying to kind of uh, get that done. So he came to me, you know, we need text mostly for the menus to explain what can you buy sure. in the shop. And yeah. these like kind of, that w would I be interested? And, and at the time I was at the Helsinki University studying the English language and literature. And, and I was like, sounds fantastic, of course, I, I, I want to come. And, and immediately after I was looking at the kind of, it was kind of a white screen type of a setup so that there was this black bar, you know, on the top and on the, on the bottom of the screen. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, it was very strict limit for like this many characters in a row and you had three rows to write this. <laughs> and I, I was like, but what about this bottom? part here at the bottom of the screen that must be like 10 rows you know could I could I write something there like a story and everybody was like mm, sure sure <laughs> <laughs> so I'm writing a crazy piece of story for the death rally world and 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 yeah that was that's the great yeah. so did, did you end up finishing university then or did, no no okay no. and I yeah I never felt like, like I, I did continue my studies all the way into Max Payne. Right. Uh, but, but then it was more and more interesting work and less and less I felt reason yeah. to go back and, and kind of make it official. Uh, so, yeah, never. So, yeah, clearly Who no, knows? No, no regrets never. about that, though, no. right? Like, clearly everything no. has worked out. And yeah, I, I, <laughs> I did end up going back to school, uh, like, we were quite far into Max Payne when I saw the opportunity of, of uh, at the Theatre Academy of Finland in Helsinki. Uh, there was this year and a half school for screenwriting. And, and the drama teacher, Pentti Halonen, uh, had just returned from here, actually from Los Angeles. He'd been here for years studying and, and doing script doctor doctoring mm -hmm. and things like that. He came back to Finland and started to, you know, teach screenwriting. And, and, and already in the kind of setup for that, he was saying that you can choose, you can write in Finnish or you can write in English. And that felt to me like that's perfect. You needed to send uh, kind of like 75 pages of, of screenplay as a sample for yeah. him. So I just sent Max Payne <laughs> and, and got in. <laughs> And, and, and spend, spend like on the side of working for the next uh, couple of years actually studying screenwriting for That's, TV and movies, wow. but, but also like, of course, for games. So, so that was great. And, and, and the, the, it was a very practical school in the sense that it was three semesters and for each semester we would do a full length movie screenplay. And, and one of them, a horror movie I, I wrote, I ended up stealing a lot from that, from myself into Mac, uh, Alan Wake. Interesting. You know? Yeah. That's really cool. Did, did they give you like a, with, with the success you've had since with, with Remedy, did they give you like an honorary degree later, like an honorary doctorate? Or, no. I, know, I don't I, know if that I, happens in Europe the way it does in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I know I haven't been in touch. <laughs> so um, what do you remember about Death Rally as, as a game. I love the story that you told about just yeah. making use of the space to write the story. What do you remember of the game itself? Yeah, I, uh, I was playing it a lot, like, like, like back then. And, and I just, I mean, I, I, from the writing perspective, I, I already back then, I, which, which holds true to this day, I have felt always uh, a, a strong need for for writing for a game or you know creating the vision for the game and then doing the story that I want to find a way to marry the, the tone of the gameplay with the tone of the story and, and and talking about the tone here like like death rally you know over the top you know explosions and machine guns and <laughs> so so I just felt like the story and, and the writing needs to be slightly crazy, yeah. like, like unhinged in a way. <laughs> and, 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 and try to kind of get that 
energy, the feeling of energy into the into the writing as as little of what there was at the, at the time. So so and 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 that's been kind of a consistent thing that was very much present in my mind for Max Payne when I started writing Max Payne then. So where you know you mentioned that, that you used the Max Payne script with <laughs> this with this uh, this uh, this course that you took. Where did where did the idea for Max Payne come from? What, was from, it you from, or was, from, was well, it? yeah, like like quickly the origin. Like like Remedy was very kind of loose thing in some ways early on. Like like there was the small core team that created Death Rally. Yeah. But from you know the different demo groups, there were a lot of people circulating around. And there were a lot of kind of prototype game projects started. And no one was at that point really being paid. Like, like mm-hmm. everyone got paid from Death Rally just from royalties, straight, okay. straight from the royalties. No one got any, you know, actually pay before. Right, salary. <laughs> right, yeah. So, and, and, you know, everybody was, it was passion project, passion project, different people creating these. And, and... Then, then, you know, one of these was early on called Dark Justice. And, and I wasn't concepting it. Uh, it was kind of this near future drug war kind of dystopian thing. Yeah. Uh, but, but then that held some promise and, and more people were brought into that project, myself included. And, and I immediately, like, from the narrative perspective, felt like, could we just do present day? world instead of the near future and 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 kind of like i felt like because i had been right before working on a kind of a role-playing game concept that was kind of film noir feel to it yeah and that didn't go anywhere but then i hopped on this and i was like let's do the film noir thing here can i can i do it here and 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 let's have a kind of a definite main character, kind of a private eye or detective sure. kind of a character. And, and, and that's how it started shaping up that idea that became Max Payne. And, and at some point you get, I think it was uh, GT Interactive published the first Max Payne. Do I yeah, remember that Yeah, and, and of course, this, you know, Scott Miller and George Broussard being the same guys who were 3D Realms. Yeah. And, 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 and they get, came, well, Scott came, George yeah, he, Scott was on this show. He told he told right. his side of the story. Okay, of this. yeah, <laughs> and, and and he checked out all the different projects that yeah. Remedy had in the making, and he picked this like like this is interesting. We would be interesting in partnering into yeah. this with you and finding a publisher, and and of course we were like yes, okay, this is what we are doing then, and and it started shaping up, and and Petri like the friend that brought me in. He was on a different rally project early on. I think the name was Accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to hang on to that one. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a good one. And 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 but when Dark Justice started moving forward, he came on board as as I think the lead designer. And and he brought in the idea of like he was a big fan. We were all be- fans of, of Hong Kong action movies like yeah. John Woo stuff. Sure. And he had early on this idea that, you know, the, the slow-mo bullet time thing is so cool. Can we somehow find a way to make that part of the game experience? Yes. So that came from him, from me, kind of the film noir. And I do feel like if you look at the John Woo movies, I think that there is an echo of film noir there, like it's very big on melodrama yeah. and, and like, so, so it fit in, like those clicked into place and this felt like, yes, this, this works. And, and for me, the film noir, like love for that really comes almost from childhood. Like I, I used to love Humphrey Bogart movies <laughs> as a kid growing up. And, and then later on, like I, you know, 95, 96, when we are starting out, like like looking at the movies back then, there was a real real search of of kind of a modern noir, like yes. Usual Suspects, Fight Club, Seven, uh, David Lynch's Lost Highway, like all of those movies are coming out, and like 
I love them like with great passion that this is wonderful. So, so all of that kind of affected it. Uh, some co comic books as well, uh, definitely. But, but yeah, that, that's what I felt like. <laughs> well, I got to selfishly ask you, I, um, I love everything about Max Payne, but he, he's voiced so perfectly by James McCaffrey, no yes. relation. So I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm curious though, where, where did you find him? <laughs> and, and did you audition a million people for the role? We, we did audition quite a few. Uh, I mean, this is already at the point when, when, when Rockstar is, is becoming involved. So it was the auditions were New York based. Yeah. Uh, kind of actors, actors there. And, and yeah, we, we did go through an audition process like like Jim's voice, it just felt like, yes, this is great. Like it, it still took, Navid Konsari was our VO director all the way to through Alan Wake. Uh, and, 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 and we were kind of iterating on the style of narration. It wasn't quite there from the beginning. I was writing, you know, test material and we were practicing and trying it out because that felt like such an important part. You and James were trying it out. So. Well, I mean, Navid and James okay. and I was remote, like giving feedback yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and writing more material for him to try out. So, so, but it's like from the beginning, it felt like this is going to work. This is going to be great. And now just find the style for it. Well, my, I uh, tell you, I think my, my favorite scene in the original Max Payne is uh, the hallucination sequence <laughs> where where he compares it to being in some kind of video game. Yeah. So was that like <laughs> was that fun for you to try and kind of break that fourth wall a little bit? I I love meta. <laughs> I, I I do love like like I'm 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 waiting for you to get to control because we have that in some ways there <laughs> like been having fun with that lately. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I enjoy that a lot. And, and that, that also comes maybe then from university studies, like, like moving from, you know, how, how your taste kind of develops along the way. I, I do like weird. I have always liked weird. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, going from genre fiction and then like big discovery studying literature at the university was postmodern literature for me. And that, you know, it's fascinating, especially when you are like studying it in the, in the, like analyzing, because it almost feels like it's a, it's a, it's a literary genre that's made for analysis. It's, it's <laughs> almost like you are playing a game, like, like you are coming up with interpretations and, and once again, investing into it yes. and, and gaining more out of it by investing into it. So, so playing a game almost with the writer, which which like like also has been in my mind when writing for games uh, in, in in some ways, but that's kind of where it started. It's 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 all you know postmodern and 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 playing around with with kind of like point of view and and like what's real and what's not real. And by the way, don't worry, we're gonna get to control. Yeah, but they, we, you got to yeah, take yeah. a walk with me here. Sure. Yeah. Through, we're, we're, I'm, we're I'm gonna happy get to. You're not here they, for your health. You're here to promote a video game control exactly. out yeah, August 27th yes. on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're we're still working through some Max Payne stuff because. But but I think that <laughs> well, I mean, it's a logical sto uh, like journey yeah. through this, and and I do feel I I've been thinking about a lot about that kind of when working on control it's been it's been a different kind of a project uh, with 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 many things and approach and i've i've had many kind of flashbacks to working on max Payne, uh, on on working yeah on and, control. and i'll tell you control too you i guess all right we're gonna talk about it for a second <laughs> <laughs> well um, three years for you guys your uh, your history again as i i told you at the top like i think you guys have have an incredible track record but Usually, you guys, you know, have have taken taken your time to yes. get get your games right, but uh, <laughs> a pretty tidy three years between Quantum Break and Control is that a is that a a, a technical 
sort of streamlining uh, of, of the, the, your sort of development infrastructure? Or is that, ha have you become more efficient in, in world building and, and writing as well? Well, I, I think it's all of those things, uh, really. Uh, but it's, 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 it's also like, yes, original Max Payne, five years. But then Max Payne 2, uh, that was 18 months. Wow. Like, like creating that whole thing. And, and I, I still look back to it in some ways as one of the most pleasurable writing experiences in my career. Like, like it was a very short time period. Like I, the original screenplay for the first Max Payne was something like 165 pages. Wow. And, and the screenplay for the sequel was 650 pages. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and the whole project, which means that the writing took less time, was 18 months. Interesting. And, 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 and that was just <laughs> like, I know this world. I know these characters. Yeah. I, I, I was fresh out of the screenwriting school. Now I know, you know, wh what process. I'm doing. Yeah. And just going at it and, and let's make it even more film noir and let's have fun with this and, and push it further. And, and so, so it's not like, you know, I mean, there are many, many stages in a big game project. And, and it is true that, that depending on where you are with your engine and tools, it might be that you are waiting a lot. Like it's, it's not really waiting. You are creating, you are creating, but sure. you are, you end up iterating on the same parts while waiting for the actual thing to mature so that you can create more or less final content and, and only then certain things kind of yeah, lock and, into place and, and then you can start running. And you guys have been, uh, it's uh, Northlight is the name of your sure. in-house technology, yes. right? And, and that's been in place for a number of years now. It so has. I guess you guys probably just know it very well at this yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, with games, it's always going forward. So there, you, you, you know, our, our tech team, awesome people, brilliant minds, like, like a lot of that thing just like, not even understanding what the, what, what, what the challenges are. Obviously there are challenges, uh, but, but yeah, like coming out of quantum break, we were make, we, we had the engine and the tools in a very robust state and, and, and a lot of opportunities to hit the ground running. I mean, a lot of improvements and a lot of additional components have been created while working on control. But, but yeah, that, that's one part of it, why it was so much faster. Also, it, it, it was from the perspective that kind of, in some ways we, we decided to like, we were doing new things, but we also decided that let's focus on certain areas, maybe more than before, mm -hmm. and, and very kind of purposefully go forward with those, which also kind of made, it, made the process faster. So uh, take me back to Max Payne for a minute. Now, uh, I, I of course can't let a, an hour long sit down with you go by without, of course, bringing up probably your least favorite subject, which is that you are literally the face of Max Payne, of the, of the original Max Payne. Uh, do, do, you, do people ask you to do the face all the time? Is that just like a, a curse of, in your life at this point? Well, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, at trade show, like E3. Yeah. Yes, sure. All, I mean, all it in happened. the hallways, yeah. It, it does happen. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, oblige. Uh, I mean, th there was a time coming out of the first Max Payne where I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to distance myself yeah. from this. Yeah. But it's then, you know, the funny thing happens that years roll by and then it's like, well, you know, it's just fun. Yeah. Like, like Who'd so, have thought you'd still be getting asked to do it all these years sure, later, yeah, right? Like that says something it's good. An, it's an honor. Yes. And, and, and it's a wonderful com compliment, I feel. So, so yeah, but it happens. <laughs> uh, now, the other face of Max Payne would, would go on to become uh, Mark Wahlberg in sure. the, the 2008 film. So um, were you guys, you know, again, given your, your screenwriting, your background, were you guys pitching it and trying to get a, get, you know, strike while the iron's hot mm -hmm. and try to get a movie made or, or did Hollywood come to you? No, well, like, as I recall, it was 
Scott's thing, okay. uh, Scott Miller's yes. thing. The game wasn't even out. Uh, he had uh, a friend who was a producer and, and, and they had been talking about it. And, and I hope I'm not mangling up the history, but <laughs> the, the, kind of my recollection is that, that there was an opportunity to sell the movie rights. And, and, and he really, like, he's looking at things from PR angle a lot. Sure. And, and, and he felt that it would be a great PR move because, you know, I suppose back then, no movie rights for a game that was not out True. Uh, had happened. Yeah. And, and, and we would get a new speed out of that. And, yeah. and help. But that happened and the rights were sold. And then later on, like the game rights were sold for Take Two and Rockstar. Right. Well, yeah, I'll talk about but, that. But, 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 but the movie rights had gone their own way. And, and, you know, like Hollywood works, it was in the making. Then it wasn't in the making and it disappeared. And after a few years, it, it came up again and some other people were making a movie and it went like this way. And, and we were just kind of in the distance, having nothing to do with it, like hearing these news just as anybody wow. else. That's, that's got to be a little frustrating in, this, in a sense, Well, right? I mean, early days in all of this, like it felt like, wow, so somebody is interested in the movie and then it went its own way. and, and we were focusing on creating the game, but you know, we, we were not in any way involved in the process of making the movie. It, but when, when, when a Mark Wahlberg gets attached, it's, you, there's probably some reason for optimism at that point, oh, bro, because yeah, he's, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a big deal at that point in time. And what, what, well, at, what point, at what point did you know that the movie was maybe not super great? <laughs> well, like, yeah, I, we did hear things and, and I mean, I, I, I remember that, that we were actually part of the kind of premiere in Finland. Like, like you know, yeah. <laughs> go, going and see it because, <laughs> of course, like, like it's part of it. But yeah, maybe not the best movie. And, and it's kind of a curious thing, I feel, that, that especially for something like Max Payne, I'm sure that there would be an angle like if you sit down and start looking at it, what's the heart of this and what is maybe not like that. That to me is an interesting question. We are now kind of exploring the possibility of Alan Wake TV show. Really? And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's been in the news for a yeah. while. Uh, so, so the interesting thing to me is like in a game, what's there because it's a game and, and it's needed for the game. Right what is the heart of this thing that should be carried over but then like how do we make it in this different medium to stand out on its own as a strong thing and and that is an interesting question and and that maybe wasn't that thought process didn't <laughs> go into making the max Payne movie and and so the choice is there made because obviously like max Payne is a game love story for certain kinds of movies ultimately yeah. like like us being fans of you know mobster movies, yeah. and, and, movies. And, and film noir and all of that like then doing our passionate like like young i would say amateurs at that point <laughs> you know take on those things that yes and 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 that comes out and and but then like taking that and making it into a movie, it's, it's kind of a closed loop in a way. It, but, is, it, is, it so, is it depressing to you at all when, when the Max Payne comes out and the movie comes out and, and isn't very good? And like, cause you know, this is a thing that you worked hard to I, create or, or are you just so detached from it? Yeah, I, I was quite detached. I, I was happy that there was a movie. Yeah. Like at that point, I, I, I think that that already was. That was a like, victory in and of itself. Worth celebrating. So, so, but, but definitely I, I, I've been like, when we've been talking about this with our more recent games and, and looking into opportunities, that's what I have been saying, that it doesn't make sense for us to repeat that, like just sell the rights and let it go. Right. And, and somebody does something, uh, whatever we do, if we ever do something in that space, we want to be involved 
uh, creative. You'll write the screenplay. Well, basically. not necessarily, <laughs> but at least sit down with the creatives and yeah. and, and and workshop it and and have a writing room and, and, and figure it out, like what it should be and how to make it, you know, some, something that makes the whole like broader franchise stronger and, 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 and deeper rather than split it <laughs> apart and confuse it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had to, you said goodbye to Max Payne after Max Payne 2 when... Uh, right. Yeah, which, the, the the rights were sold uh, fully to, you know, to to Rockstar. Sure, they, they and, took and, it over. And, and that was like I I think that it happened in the best possible way. Like I myself and I think at the time most of the remedy like we we had worked on on Max Payne at that point for seven years, which is a long time, and 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 starting to feel like it would be fun to do something else. Yeah, and 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 the rights were really sold between the games kind of more or less interesting and, and part of the deal was that we'll create the sequel so so it, it there, there was a long goodbye period <laughs> like like i knew starting to write max Payne 2 that that in all likelihood it's gonna be the last max Payne i'm yeah. gonna write so so there was plenty of time to kind of go through that emotional journey <laughs> uh so so yeah, that worked really well. So you you did you have a say in the in the sale of that? Not that much. Uh, obviously, was part of those conversations, uh, but but not really. And it really did make sense at that point. But I, it, it, was it was it hard for you though? This thing that you'd built into a great <laughs> thing that you ultimately have very little say in in it. But as as I said, at that point, it felt like. This will give security yeah. to Remedy to create something else, right. like and 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 will be in a more secure position than ever, which means that there is a future, and 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 that already felt like a wonderful thing to achieve, and 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 so, yeah, it made sense. So so Rockstar did uh, make it worth your while. I hope you guys sure. did. <laughs> came yes. out of it. Yeah. Came out of it well. Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think of their Max Payne three? I know publicly at the when it was coming out, you had kind of given a public blessing, but I'm sort of, you know, just in hindsight, what did you think of their take on it? I mean, as I've said, like, like it, it definitely was not the Max Payne we would have done or I would have done. Like there were clear, big creative decisions being made uh, that, that I would not have seen or done or felt like even even known how to make, yeah. honestly. <laughs> uh, but I think that they are really good at what they do. Dan Hauser is a great writer. Uh, and and I, in some ways I was happy, like, like that, that it was clearly Rockstar's Max Payne and not Remedy Wannabe Max Payne, if yeah. you know. Yes, I know what because you Because I yeah. think that that would have been harder for me and more uncomfortable and, and, and conflicted. So, so I was happy. I was, but I, what, what I felt that Dan did really, really well is to take the style of Max Payne's narration into the experience. And, 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 and because Jim then ended up even, you know, borrowing his face for the, for the third, third round, yeah. which at the point when they kind of came up with that, I was going like, why, like, because, you know, <laughs> back then it wasn't like, like, it, it was just natural that there is a character and they look whatever they look, yeah. and then there is a VO actor. Right. There's no and, and, performance and, and, and really, like, at that point it was like, yeah, actually, James is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, uh, but I, I, I thought that the voice kind of carried it over in a nice way and 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 like they, they were kind enough to approach us gave us working progress stuff to review and and we did give feedback i, I did yeah. give rounds of feedback and, and and send it over for iteration especially on the narration stuff and and then afterwards then reached out and saying that they are doing a prequel comic book for it that that would i like to be part of that and yeah. and we were 
kind of workshopping and brainstorming together, he was like, he doesn't really know anything, any ideas on Max's childhood. Do I have any ideas? <laughs> and I just wrote down all, everything that I had in the back of my mind. That's cool. And it ended up in that story. <laughs> so you're, it's been seven years, you're ready to move on to something else. Where, where does Alan Wake come from? <laughs> it was a long process, like, like much longer than, than we could have imagined. Like early on, like technology was like going on on its own. Uh, but it was really me and Petri, once again, really at this point, two of us sitting down and starting brainstorming yeah. and concepting. We went through a lot of different ideas for games. Like, like there, there was even a fantasy game <laughs> that, that had a kind of a humor, comic tone to yeah. it very big departure like like sure uh, and and we were kind of pushing it until it was actually petri who said that you know i'm i'm not feeling this <laughs> i'm i'm not feeling good about it let's stop this let's think about something else and then bit by bit it started to turn into alan wake like one of the proto versions didn't have a writer yet uh that there, there was an idea of a, a man who is suffering from insomnia who comes to a sleep clinic to be treated. Yeah. And then somehow his kind of nightmares get loose. But right. that was already a Pacific Northwest small town where the dream clinic was. Interesting. So that was kind yeah, of an early on your way towards the, but but towards but it. then it's and I felt that Petru was already like also part of this kind of brainstorming where the idea of, of a writer came out. <laughs> and and I I did all the time moving towards it want to find like yes it's going to be an action game of some kind like that's what we do at remedy yeah but i want an a hero who is not an action hero by profession like something other that is you know somebody who's right. forced into that position and 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 then when the idea clicked that hey rider and 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 then it just like ch -ch 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 how uh, how place. how autobiographical is <laughs> Alan Wake in the sense of yes, I know like, you've posted pictures online <laughs> of of you have a uh, like a cabin in the woods where you go and and you write oh, oh, and <laughs> everything has a cabin in the woods so so yeah not not that unique um, I mean it's it's as much autobiographical as anything you write, uh, I yeah. write. Like like always you take, the essence you of know, yourself. your experiences or individual things or just the way like, you know, you you, you structure the world or think about things and, and, and things that you like, yeah. uh, you know, and it ends up this soup that, that kind of, you know, right. comes out. So an, an but, ocean, not a lake of soup. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, like, like, also part of like, I, uh, it's it's a wonderful honor and a compliment that that there are these certain lines like Max Payne had a lot of them that that the fans just kind of like, you know, keep bringing up in social media again and again and again. <laughs> uh, but anyway, like like one part that I suppose comes from the profession of being a writer. I think that in in Alan Wake's storyline and in the structure, there is a lot of writing process. Like it's the yes. like phases of a writing process, like as phases of a story in a way, uh, hidden in there. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I, one thing that was sort of people kind of latched onto a bit at the time uh, was the product placement, the, the Energizer batteries. The Verizon phones was that? Uh, did did Microsoft uh, bring that into the, into I, the project? Like, like, like how does that work? Certainly, Microsoft was part of it, but our our business side uh, as well yeah. at Remedy, seeing the upside. Like obviously, there is money involved. Of, of course, like no, and nobody blames but, you for it. Like like for me, that that also goes to like I, I always try to approach these things from the perspective of how do we like. It's it's challenge like if you could you know as a creative pick and choose which product placement to place in I I think that you could do a wonderful thing sure and 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 make it even stronger and more believable yeah 
it doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> but I, I, I still feel like the, the, you know, the battery placement and things like that. It's it's close enough. Like like some of those deals finally quick click into place so late that it's 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 difficult to really kind of integrate them right. deep in there. I'm, but it was fine. I, oh, it was I fine. Yeah, it's yeah. just I think it really just hadn't been done much sure. at that point in yeah. time. By the way, if, if I I can you're you're hanging so tough. If you need to get that water, no, no, make no, sure to, make it's sure fine. to get it. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course, Alan Wake has now it's it's I I almost hesitate to use the term cult classic because it Im, that almost implies that it that it didn't do you know that well. And it, in in the long run, it did. You've said in the long run, it did. But you know, it, in yeah. the moment, you know, you're a big uh, second party or big Microsoft published title on Xbox. Is it is it frustrating to get the critical acclaim, but just not see the 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 commercial results come in early on with Alan Wake? Yeah, I mean it's. I I, I think that we at Remedy were kind of spoiled. In, in in the beginning with with Max Payne being such a huge yeah. hit yeah and 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 even coming to terms with that took years for me I it, it was hard to even understand like like you know pouring your heart into it and and making it a game and and it coming out and it it, it wasn't like this that I even understand understood that that this is a big hit it's because you have no prior experience right. of what, what does it even mean. I mean, there were good reviews and from creative perspective, that was wonderful. Um, being very kind of f fresh as a creator, I think, as a writer, like, like having that wonderful opportunity of being exposed to a lot of criticism like early on, instead of like, you know, writing and writing and writing, not getting anything published. Uh, you, you like I did get a lot of negative feedback as well on the writing and and but but that, and that was a big lesson to learn like like you know you grow a thick hide and yeah. understand that I don't need to read every review <laughs> or every comment in the forums and and you know it's like you know it, it's it's endless it, yeah right and 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 maybe today like looking at at social media even more so and even more vicious at, 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 at times like so so a lot of learnings on, on 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 many levels but it too like it didn't like now I see it like people still passionately love Max Payne and bring it up and 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 you know so so which is wonderful and and it it people remember it for for a long time but but like that it took time to understand. So with Alan Wake, it was in a in a similar way. Like it, I find it slightly hard to see how well it's doing. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not a business guy. I'm not yeah. a money guy. Like yeah. in that sense. So so yeah. Like it's out there. And that in itself, from creative perspective, is such a relief. All, sure. Always like ha, <laughs> we get it. We 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 cut it out there. So so, but I like uh, Alan Wake got huge amount of positive kind of critical oh yeah you know, there's there's a re love reception for it. yes and and once again an ongoing thing and and like like so much like and growing and growing i feel that it's been growing each year i mean we all live in our small social media <laughs> bubble but i can't do a post in instagram or twitter or anywhere without getting replies, Alan Wake 2, <laughs> Alan Wake 2, please, you know, uh, Alan Wake 2 confirmed, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, like a picture of a, you know, summer camping. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not getting out of this interview without it either. And it, but, so, but I guess the where I'll take it is is this, I mean, you know, it, it by the time that sort of slow burn of a success, I think you and the team had posted that it, it really ended up having legs and going on to, you know, in, in you know, steam sales and just ongoing, it, it ended it's, up doing very, very well by the word of mouth. But yeah, it, it's it, it's every constant, you know, humble bundles and these things. It's always a huge surprise yeah. and more than estimated. So, so yeah, it a lot of people who have played Alan Wake out there. Yeah, but by the time 
it had amassed sort of a, a, a volumetric success, the, the window for Alan Wake 2 had closed. You know, you're on to Quantum Break, you've got other things. So just, I guess if you could clarify, like, and just forgive me, forgive me the audience if, if you've said this before, but who, who owns Alan Wake? Is it you or is it Microsoft? We, we own You do Alan have Wake, it. Yes. So um, at, at this point, and I, I promise I'll leave you alone on the subject after this, but do you even want to make it at this <clears throat> point? Or, or has kind of the moment passed and you know, you've got control and you just want to move on to new things? No, I, I want to make it. Good. I, I, I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it, it's a curious thing. I mean, like I've said, like at this point, so much time having passed, I, I, I feel that like the bar is higher in some ways, and, you know, that, that it's, it's like it needs to be done right if it's ever done. Right. And, and, and everything needs to click into place, which is really hard to make it happen. Like, like so many things for these big games to, you know, be greenlit. So many things need to be aligned. And, 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 you know, so, but I, I'm hoping that someday, and, and it's, I, like, like the funny thing is that, that I kind of feel personally that on and off, ever since the first game, I've been working on the sequel. Like, 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 and, and, and this is, I, I haven't said this publicly, but between each project, like, like after the first game, I and we, with a small crew, we created a concept for the sequel. But it, Outside of American Nightmare. Well, before, actually. But, but then we realized that this is not going forward. And, and some of those ideas went into Quantum Break. And some of those ideas went in a kind of reduced, more kind of scaled down way, went into American Nightmare. Then coming out of Quantum Break, we created a concept for a new concept, very different for, for Alan Wake 2. Yeah. And, and we were looking at it, we were talking about it with potential partners. Ultimately, we came to the conclusion that it doesn't quite feel like Alan Wake. And, and, and it, this, this was me and, and, and Miksu, Mikhail Kasurinen, who is the game director and, and director of Control. Yes. We created this together. And we decided that we'll just do a new IP. We'll take these ideas and we'll put them into a new IP. And, and that became Control. Interesting. So Control so, started life as a, as a prototype concept. Well, for... not, 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 not quite that much, but there was a separate... Elements of it. Co separate uh, kind of concept for a new kind of an Alan Wake 2 that we decided to kind of put on hold, but there were some aspects, especially on the kind of the more long lasting experience and more mission based and right. more like open ended in some ways. And we took those ideas and, and, and like made them as, as kind of design parameters and just felt like, well, but we'll just create a completely new, you know, world and narrative and, 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 and like gameplay thing yeah. around it and and that became control so as control winds down we're recording this in june uh games out in august will you retreat to the to the woods in the summer and uh will you work more on and see what comes out of your brain with regard to, to alan wake i won't i i will take a proper long <laughs> summer vacation Good for you uh like like it's been as these things often our control has been a pretty intense project and 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 uh so and i've been in in a cabin enough writing the story <laughs> of control so so i'm 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 taking a proper summer break and and then we'll start evaluating what's next because you know you've got a, an in-house game engine that your team's really familiar with and good at that happens to excel at lighting and yeah. and it's uh, and and third person action and you've got a new generation of of consoles with a lot more horsepower that are right around the corner so i don't know it seems like maybe the the post puzzle pieces will finally come together i said the bar is high and 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 like 
this is <laughs> this is not Alan Wake to confirm. <laughs> but but you know, coming back to your question, I do hope it happens. Uh, like I would love it more than anything. I, I have a lot of passion for creating it. I I like I I am I find myself often thinking about the story and the characters and yeah. and and like it has evolved. But in some ways I, I, I also feel like you know, just the laws of drama being we left the poor guy in the dark place and and you know it's it's not easy to get out yeah from the dark place. So it's it it you know there's a it, story it, it's there. proper <laughs> that it takes a lot of effort. Yes. I, I hope that someday. Yeah. Me too, me too. Um, quantum break. So see we're moving, we're getting towards control, yeah. we're almost yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Xbox One, the Dur Durango at the time, you know, the, it, it seemed like such a, the original vision for that seemed like such a great fit for what you were doing with, uh, with Quantum Break, this TV yep. meets, meets games. And, and, um, and, and by the way, just mentioning this, like, like the then pitch for Alan Wake 2 that we first approached Microsoft with, yeah. it had a live action component. Interesting. In where, where, and, and they liked that part. They would, at, at the time, yeah. they were saying, you know, we would rather look at the new IP than, than continue with Alan huh. Wake right now. And it was different people like, yes. in, in the negotiations at that point. Right. Uh, so, so they were eager for something else. That bit they liked. So, so I decided to, well, we'll go back home and figure out, <laughs> like, like take these elements and what they were looking for as, you know, strategical things at the time. And, and I, I had some story concepts made, you know, just kind of jot it down and I went through them. And one of them, kind of the working name was Quantum that involved time travel, but it also involved a lot of kind of a uh, alternate reality, parallel reality thing, mm -hmm. which ended up kind of like shrinking away as we worked on it and time travel became a bigger part, but that I took and, and used these different like things that they liked in the, in the Alan Wake. So <laughs> after, after all the, you know, hundreds if not thousands of pages uh, of, of screenwriting work that you've done on games and, and in school, you you did finally get to make a TV show. Yeah, but you I shot I, it. Go I, ahead. Yeah, I I didn't write the TV show. Part. You didn't. Okay. Yeah. And, and I didn't know I, that. Yeah, like, and and it. Let's just say, like, I mean, it, it, a lot of learnings once again along the way. I I and and I wouldn't do it the same way again. Like, uh, but but happy that we did it nonetheless. But there was a separate writing team. Like like. Microsoft felt really strongly at the time that, that there needs to be LA-based writing team with TV background, like, like, you know, having a degree of ownership on the show part, hmm. which, which make, made it, of course, like more work and, and, and more trips and more sitting down together and, and workshopping and workshopping right. and trying to make sure that the vision of this part and vision of this part get close enough and like tracking it closer you know so so there was kind of like two years of a lot of intense work to get it as close as it ended up being and it started like quite much further apart and 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 i i do think like well like these are not easy things and and you know every, really everybody everybody wants to kind of Everybody wants the best of the project. People just have different points of view, yeah. and, and you know, uh, but but, and I'm I'm happy how it ended up being. Uh, it was just a lot of work along the way. Yeah, uh, and and yeah. So in, in hindsight, that that everything should have flown through you narratively. Well, like, and been... it's easy for me to say, and easy for Remedy to say, but maybe there is a just a tiny bit of of, of metaphor in calling the game control. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to be working well so far. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, see like, when yeah. it comes out. Um, 
you know, uh, after Quantum Break, you parted ways with Microsoft uh, in your, you know, your kind of, I guess, second party relationship. And, and that sort of struck me as odd, uh, not from you, but from them, in the sense that, you know, they needed then, and, and you know, they've been taking steps to rectify it now, but boy, they needed some exclusive games at that point, and, and you know, the, the, the decision is made, well, or let's, let's, go, let's go our separate ways. Was, was that your choice or theirs or a mutual thing to, no, I, to part? No, and, and you know, well, we, 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 are, we are kind of working with them right now. Like, like I'm not sure if you caught the announcement in the uh, Xbox keynote about uh, uh, Crossfire X. Right, uh, yes. And, and, and we are working with Smilegate creating Single player story yeah. story driven campaign into that and and kind of it's it, it will be coming out through Microsoft so so yeah. uh, so so the relationship is ongoing good uh, and and like I I think that a lot of things through the ten years that we worked together worked wonderfully and 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 a lot of I mean so so. And, and, you know, it's like Alan Wake was a convoluted long process uh, because of many reasons. Quantum Break was a convoluted, like it's, it's complicated to create big games like that. And, and, and they have helped us a lot along the way and, and, and good relationships there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's always like, what are they looking for at the moment from strategical perspective? Uh, we did go and show our updated thinking on Alan Wake 2 after Quantum Break. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it didn't feel like it was uh, like instant, you know, sparks flying and this is a match. And, and, and then we kind of decided to uh, wanted to try out like for a while, let's, let's just try to be more... Uh, in the driving seat on all aspects, like 505 Games is a great, great partner uh, for that. And, and uh, like multi-platform, just from an indie dev perspective, uh, we hadn't been doing that for years and True. years. Yeah. So, so it felt like, wouldn't it be wonderful to try it with this game, like, like on, on all the different major platforms like PlayStation and, and, and Xbox and, and PC all. What, uh, so besides uh, maintaining tighter control on control, what, uh, what, what does control from, from where you sit, um, from the kind of the narrative side, the creative side, what does control learn from Quantum Break and even for that matter from, from Alan Wake and, and Max <clears throat> Payne? Oh, well, I mean, I, for me personally, I, I I, I can draw on multiple levels kind of certain threads that I feel fascinating and I like exploring and, and evolving in some ways. I think that one big learning and, and, and kind of like, you know, there, there is always that feel that you work on something, you want to iterate and improve, but also in some ways you feel like, well, want to get excited about something fresh and new. And, and then it's kind of a pendulum swing <laughs> that, that, well, like, let's try, like, I feel like big part of the vision from my part as well was that for Quantum Break, let's create like Hollywood blockbuster ex experience, like, like, you know, it's sci-fi. Yes, time travel is always difficult, but mm -hmm. in some ways, Let's try to make it like a kind of a mainstream sci-fi, yeah. you know, fun experience. This then, like getting into control, especially f with, with, with Mikhail, we share a lot of kind of similar tastes, both like weird things. We just decided that this time around, let's not hold any stops. Let's, go, let's not second guess, like, will the gamers get this? Let's just like go with our passion. Let's make it as weird <laughs> as we feel excited about. And, and we kept pushing like, it can be weirder. Like, like, like yeah, this is an exciting idea. And, and just like try to channel that passion and excitement 
into this project as much as possible. And that to me, like in some ways, kind of mentally took me back to the first Max Payne. We didn't, back then we didn't know any better. Right, that that right. was the only way to yeah. do it. Obviously through years you start to say, see, you know, gain more perspective and, you know, analyze it more. And, but here we tried to kind of push that slightly to the side and just like, let's go where our passion and takes that's, us. And that's the way to do it, right? Sure. You don't, you don't yeah. want to like focus test something to yeah. death and, and make sure it appeals to like, just you got, you got to make something for yourself. And if you love it, then other people are going to yeah, love like, it, Yeah, right? like, and that's where the kind of the genre like for the narrative, like new weird, like, like, you know, say Jeff Wandermeer's Annihilation that, that came out as a movie as well, but, but the book especially, and, and, and a lot of that stuff for me. And, 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 and at the same time, like, like Mikhail is a, is a great fan of, of Dark Souls, say. So, so we just felt that it can be more challenging. It can be weirder. It can be, <laughs> you know, hopefully in a positive way, like for the player to put more effort into it, both to actually manage to <laughs> play it through, but also from the narrative perspective for me, I mean, yeah. I felt that this can be fragmented. This can be open for interpretation. This can be hallucinatory and, and dreamlike. And, and, you know, you need to pick up the pieces and piece them together. And maybe you didn't even find all the pieces and, and somebody else found the pieces and then people can go online and, you know, start coming up with theories. And I, I think it's about this. And, and yeah. that, that feels like something that I get huge kicks about in, in all mediums of entertainment, like, like postmodern writing right. or, or today's modern like like TV shows, if you can even call them TV shows anymore. <laughs> but but like ambitious, challenging stuff like Legion, the show, kind of Noah Wiley and and uh, you know, Mr. Robot and and you know new Twin Peaks, of course. <laughs> like like I, I I loved the new Twin Peaks with, with so much passion. Did I, you play Inside a few years ago? Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's exactly I, the kind of where you just you you. It's so open yeah, to your like, interpretation. Like, yeah. It's like what's going bit on? Bit by bit, like. <laughs> um, it, it's funny. My next question almost ties directly into what you just said. Uh, that's you know of get of just focusing on what excites you and doubling down on on your uh, what you're enthusiastic about because. Control for me, I've played it a couple different occasions now, and and it, I feel like it's a it's a almost it almost feels like a throwback game <laughs> to yeah, and I mean this in a good and a really good yeah, way, yeah, like yeah. you know it's not a, it's it, it it just it almost feels like a game that that uh, could have come out in the early two thousands, like just a a really focused action adventure game with cool powers and physics and and things to do without a lot of other you know like microtransaction hooks sure. or all this yeah. like it it feels like a very focused game to me yeah and that that was kind of a big kind of starting mission statement for, from us that, that let's make it like and and part of the reason why we are close to the finish line now uh that that kind of to to get it done but yeah like it's it is also a throwback, I guess, in the sense that, that you know, it is things that, that me and Mikhail feel that we love and, and, and kind of like drawing stuff from that, which kind of tends to go back a bit, like yeah. things that you, 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 that, you know, somehow have left a mark. Really, really new things, rarely kind of, they, they need time to seep in true <laughs> yes and 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 so i i think that there is that part of it like from the story perspective for me we made a, we made a very strict decision early on that that we will we will yes use cutscenes but way less than before uh, also like coming out from quantum break i i definitely felt that live action is a keeper i want to do live action as part of these experiences but let's find a completely new way of doing live action. I mean, we have old stuff, you know, in there. So you will be finding 
televisions with with live action content yeah what that we've been doing and and that are quite actually critical for the overall narrative mm -hmm. but on, on on top of that we are experimenting on and that goes to hallucinatory things like you've seen material so for example the previous director the dead tri director trench keeps appearing in a in a weird way to Jesse as you play yeah and and that's live action material blended on many layers oh, cool. on 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 top of the actual game footage yeah and and that's just one example of like like finding new ways of bringing live action as like maybe more integrated into the overall and and the fun part of it it's a storytelling tool where you don't need to take controls away from the player you keep playing and these visions are appearing to you and you are yeah. gaining more kind of narrating information while you play is there going to be a uh, a new poets of the fall song on on a radio somewhere in uh, in the oldest house <laughs> <laughs> looking it's like a tradition at this point well yeah i mean <laughs> we 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 missed a beat with with quantum prey unfortunately like like we wanted to do that but then there were complications on <laughs> on on legal side and and it, it happens it, it, yeah and so so that was a bummer but but like the band is good friends of mine and and i do personally like let's leave it to this i i feel <laughs> that it's 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 a fun interesting part of a remedy game experience so so you know like like trying always to, to look for opportunities for something like that. Last question for you. I'm gonna let you get out of here. What are you doing for your 50th birthday coming up? It's, it's coming up, yeah. <laughs> Next March. Yeah? Yeah, like, like wouldn't it be great? Like if, if somewhere close there, we would have, you know, an interesting announcement. That would be great. <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> there, there, there is nothing planned. It's kind of a scary thing. It's I'm, I'm trying to come to terms with that. Like it, yeah. You got a few more months. Sure, <laughs> I am, figure I am. it out. Well, I'm just, I guess I'm sorry. It's what a horrible way to end, end an interview. Yeah, no, to yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like, uh, and and it's it's also close to the point. Not quite like next year, but but uh, like, I I. I I'm, I'm close to 25 year mark on on wow as a w working at Remedy. Yeah. So I think it's 23 something now. That's fantastic. Yeah. It, it, it's been a ride and and the thing about making games what what's great about it uh, even in the same company like like Remedy has been evolving through the years and 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 games are evolving like like it's it's so interesting that every new game is also like venturing into the unknown like like in the sense that new technology new opportunities right. also like like we don't know how much this is going to take and and what <laughs> this is going to cost and and you know it's always like doing something in at least parts of it are something that no one has done before so it's prototyping that keeps it fresh, that keeps it interesting and exciting, yeah. always. Onward and upward. Sam Lake, thank you so much. Thank A you. A real pleasure. Likewise. Sam Lake, uh, Control is the game out August 27th on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, for more episodes of IGN Unfiltered, I do this every single month. Check back on IGN YouTube or your favorite podcast service for, yeah, I think 43 other episodes of this. If you, Almost if you had fun. 50. Almost 50. I'm getting there too. Uh, yeah. I'm getting there too. Sam, like, thank you so much. Uh, thank keep you. it locked right here to IGN.